Hello guys and gals, how's it going? The Game Awards 2023! Now, as a gamer, I'm a huge fan of the award shows, okay? It's a time that I get to sit down with the boys, crack a beer, and watch my favorite game get snuffed for awards. Now, uh, the Game Awards is coming out, and uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Jeff's stuff. Usually a lot of cool games get revealed. Uh, maybe GTA 6 might, but hey, <laughs> whoo, I'm getting a little too, uh, I've been huffing the hopium today, haven't I? But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go through 31 votes today, and I feel like, uh, you know, we're just going to see what, what, what this year has. Now, game of the year, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience. Now on this list, you got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spoderman 2, Resi 4, and of course, two Nintendo games. Now look, I like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, okay? It's a fine game. But compared to the quality offered by the rest of this, that one struck off. Uh, I never beat Tears of the Kingdom, got kind of bored with it halfway through. The game that I really loved this year was Resident Evil 4. I made a whole playthrough of it on my channel. You can go check it out. Now, of course, Alan Wake 2, great game. Also haven't beaten it yet. It's not too long. I just kind of got halfway through it and uh, I still got to finish it, but time gets the best of me. I will say best game in this list. And I know this sounds like obviously, oh, you're, this is what everyone thinks, Baldur's Gate 3. And that's because it's actually a great game. I guess the best way to say Baldur's Gate 3 is uh, it really feels like old school, like CRPG, but not only CRPG, but immersive games. If you ever played Deus Ex or, you know, like shit, even the System Shock remake that came out this year. If you feel like you can do something in the game's world, even if it's breaking it, you can do it in Baldur's Gate 3. I actually like Baldur's Gate 3 so much. I haven't finished it, obviously. It's a very long game. And I'm kind of running two save files, one with my friends and one just by myself. And uh, the amount of choice you have in this game is insane. Now, I'm a huge fan of turn-based stuff, so I know that for people, the combat in this game is like a hit or miss. I love turn-based style of combat. This game has it in droves. Uh, the world is genuinely massive to explore. There's a lot of choice to be offered. And it, it's such a good experience that I really hope Larian will build like a Deus Ex style experience with this format sometime down the road. So I'm gonna vote that and uh, go to the next category. Best game direction. Oh man, dude, Baldur's Gate's still here? All right, I already won game of the year, but I think outstanding creative vision and innovation. So again, there's only two options here. It's either Tears of the Kingdom and Alan Wake 2. I, 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 I don't really find Mario to be like the craziest thing. I mean, sure, it probably falls into like, no, it's actually innovation in game direction. So the only logical choices here would probably be Tears of the Kingdom and Alan Wake 2. Baldur's Gate 3 is great, but it's like the CRPGs from back in the 90s anyways, just brought back with the nicest coat of polish. I gotta say, best game direction, probably Alan Wake 2. That game is captivating and it's spooky. And if you haven't played it, you should give it a try. Best narrative? Oh, baby. Oh, okay, so it, 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 literally, it literally falls down to Baldur's Gate, FF16, or Phantom Liberty. Have I told you, like, Phantom Liberty, with the acting that Idris Elba provides and the storyline just for the DLC, this actual piece of content actually perfects Cyberpunk 2077. And it's so good that, like, it's the only game where, like, the choices I make, I had to stop for, like, two minutes, literally pause the game and think about how I was interacting with the characters around me. So for that, I gotta say, the most immersive narration, narrative experience is probably in Phantom Liberty. But a close second is still like Alan Wake 2. Honestly, all these games are great. I mean, Spider-Man 2, compared to the rest of these four, get the fuck out of here. Phantom Liberty, its own super great experience. I'm gonna vote for that one. Oh, best art direction. Oh, all right, let's see. So of course, man, they are really pushing the Nintendo games here. Now, Tears of the Kingdom, art direction already was experiencing in Breath of the Wild. Doesn't seem that crazy to me. I prefer the darker palettes of like a uh, Twilight Princess. Mario, again, I'm gonna sound like the biggest platforming hater, but we're gonna ignore all of it there because again, it doesn't blow me away compared to anything that I saw back on the Wii U days, the, the, the DS days, get out of here. Uh, again, best art direction probably might be Hi-Fi Rush. I'm just a huge fan of cell shaded designs. And this one popped out a lot more than Tears of the Kingdom. So I'm gonna vote for Hi-Fi Rush there, okay? Alan Wake's great, but that's more like 
because the ray tracing, path tracing, all that shit is there. Best score in music doesn't even have to be an answer. Play Final Fantasy 16. The end game boss music is still like, I still hear it in my head. It's that good. Best audio design? Ooh, oh man. See, this is where I'm gonna say it's probably Alan Wake 2. See, if it's talking about best in-game audio and sound design, this game, because I was playing it with headphones, because I was playing it on the PC, uh, just because it doesn't have a physical release, might as well just buy it on PC. Also, path tracing, all the maxed out visuals. The thing it does with enemies whispering in your ears and the way that exterior sounds that aren't the in-game soundtrack work in this game is great. It, it adds a lot to the horror. This game, if, if I had to explain the combat, you actually don't fight a lot in Alan Wake 2. A lot of it just messes around by being tense. You think you're always on edge because a fight's about to start, but generally, you know, as, as you walk around these darker areas in the game, the game just messes with you, making you think that you're about to start a fight, and the audio plays really heavily into it. For a survival horror game, brilliant work. Absolutely love it. Best performance? Oh, dude. See, like, this isn't even a question. Play Phantom Liberty, dude. Idris Elba kills it. It's funny, because he's, like, one of the best actors in the world. And even when you pit him up next to Keanu Reeves, because Keanu Reeves, I think, is a great action star, not the best actor, kills it. Innovation and accessibility. Hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played. You know what game wins there? Like, goddamn Forza Motorsport. You know why? Because, like, it adds literal features where I think it slows the game down by, like, 90%, making it easier for anybody that's, like, physically disabled to play the video game. I do think Diablo 4 probably wins because generally 100% of the player base for this game is actually disabled. And if they enjoy Diablo 4, then absolutely it should win the innovation and accessibility because you truly created an accessible product there. Goddamn. Games for impact for a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Um, I haven't played any single one of these games, to be honest with you, okay? I've actually, I'm looking at these names, and I don't even think I've ever seen any of these games brought up. But you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm going to look at Venba, because it kind of reminds me of my parents, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit yes for that one. Best Ongoing, awarded to a game for outstanding development and ongoing content. Now, I think if you personally vote, for anything other than, I'm not joking with you, Final Fantasy uh, 15 MMO or fucking Fortnite, you're wrong. Because let me tell you something, Fortnite's not my cup of tea, but this game is constantly in the mainstream. Like, obviously they're doing something right for constantly engaging their specific player base. But I'm still going to go for FF15 MMO because I just like Final Fantasy more, okay? Oh, hell yeah. Best community support. How do you put Destiny 2 on that list? What kind of... Bro, <laughs> man. Somebody got on their knees to Jeff there. <laughs> you know what? Best community support. Uh, recognizing a game for outstanding community support. Transparency, transparency and responsiveness. Inclusive of social media activity. And game updates and patches. Look, I love No Man's Sky. But, like, it takes a lot to come out and just accept your L. So I'm gonna give it to Cyberpunk 2077, okay? That, good job. I, I don't even know how Bungie brought Destiny 2 here. That, that game, ooh, that is the fattest lie I've ever seen. Fake news on that one, for sure. Best independent game for outstanding creation. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good these other games are. If you don't have Dave the Diver on your goddamn Steam Deck, you're out of it. That game's great. It's like the best roguelike dive. The, the general principle of the gameplay is you dive underground, you collect fish resources, and then the fish you collect, you go back up and you literally like run a sushi restaurant as well too. It's like the best gameplay loops working with each other. Okay, come on. Best debut indie games? Well, I'm gonna have to either say Pizza Tower for its Wario Land influence, but I played through Viewfinder. That game is a trip, okay? Basically, the way that they have it is you find these photos, you take photos of them, or, or, or you find these photos, you plaster them onto the world, and it changes how the map is laid out. Actually, a really interesting game. I wanna see how this one was coded, it's that good. So I'm gonna give it to Viewfinder, absolutely cool game. Um, but let's see. Best mobile... 
Oh wow, you play mobile games, Muna? Honestly, the only game, the only game I played out of this list, I shit you not, was Hello Kitty Island Adventure, because my wife likes Hello Kitty, and you know what? If she wants to play some Apple games with me, yeah, I guess. I'll give it to Hello Kitty. It's not, I mean, it's just Animal Crossing with Sanrio characters. Best VR and AR, oof. See, there's only two options. You got Resident Evil Village or Gran Turismo 7. And you know what? I love survival horror, so I'm going to go with that VR mode. They make killer VR modes, and I'm excited to play through RE4s. All right, what is this? Armored Core 4, best action game. <laughs> there's only one answer to this. Fucking Ghost Runner 2. That game is so good. It makes you feel like a goddamn cyber ninja. Best action adventure, Alan Wake 2, Marvel, Star Pfft. Resident Evil 4, okay? We're going back to Spain. Get out of here. That game was... So a game that I finish in one sitting is already, like, god tier for me. Best RPG, okay, Baldur's Gate 3, FF16. <laughs> I mean, why even mention the others? It's obviously Baldur's Gate 3, okay? Look... It's the only game that is captivating, engaging. It's got a, t it literally lets you role play. Okay. Final Fantasy 16. It's a good narrative game. Yes, sure. But I wouldn't consider it to be like, I'm playing a role. I'm in the foot of Clive Rossfield, you know, reclaiming what it's, it, it is more of an action adventure, devil may cry experience. And Starfield, obviously comparing it to Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield is very, very bare bones in how you manipulate the world and the things you can do with the main and side narrative compared to like the goat that is Baldur's Gate 3. Let's be honest here. Best fighting game. I'm not the best fighting game decider because I don't really play fighting games, but out of this list, the only one I played is Fi Street Fighter 6, which I think is great because the single player alone goes beyond just a fighting game and actually adds open world exploration and character development or like character creation, and I'm a huge fan of how they did that, and I hope all these other games take some cues from that. So I'm going to give it to SF6. Best family game? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how you can't pick anything in this list that isn't the god-tier Pikmin 4, bro. <laughs> Unironically, one of my sleeper love games from the Switch. Get out of here. <laughs> That's one of the best. Best sim strategy game. Pikmin 4, Fire Emblem Engage, Company of Heroes. Oh. Boy. This list ain't that impressive. But, uh, you know, I'm going to give it to Advance Wars 1 and 2 because you can never go wrong with some Advance Wars. I feel like if that's the only thing that came out strategy-wise, I'm a little saddened. Best sports racing games. I'm literally... It's, just, it's literally the battle of mid right here, okay? But, um... I'm going to have to give it to the crew motorsport because I, I just, it's either the crew or Forza. I'll give it to Forza. I played that a little bit more. I feel like that's more fair. There's not really a whole heck of a lot there. Best multiplayer, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, Super Mario. Yo, how does that game even get multiplayer support? Okay. Do, the co-op isn't even online. It's like ghost players. I do. Ooh. No, I'm no. This video is gonna sound like I'm the biggest Mario hater in the world. How do you get best multiplayer when you're bringing in features from like 2010 Xbox 360? Get out of here, okay? Uh, Diablo 4, nah, it's not the best multiplayer at all. Get out of here. Baldur's Gate 3 multiplayer is fun, all right? Because let me tell you something. I'm playing it co-op with the boys, and I'm surprised how well they got it functioning. Closest second is probably Street Fighter 6. But me and my bro boy only played that like one night. I'm going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 for best multiplayer. Really? That is the best multiplayer though? Not even like a shooter or something that came out? Come on. Best adaptation. Uh, oh, this is something on the, on, on the, old, on the old TV side. Uh, Twisted Metal. You know what? I'm going to take a fat L here. I thought against the Twisted Metal TV show on Peacock. That show's actually good. I'm going to give it to Twisted Metal. Didn't watch The Last of Us TV show all that much to completion, but I've heard it's decent. Most anticipated game. Final Fantasy or Like a Dragon? I mean, dude, it's it's like, it, it that's the hardest choice so far, okay? Like, it's just, I, I want Final Fantasy Rebirth, but like, 
you can, you cannot vote the Yakuza game. This is this is what this, come on. This, if you if you're not ready for like a dragon infinite wealth, what are you doing? Okay, come on, like come on now. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this year's uh, game awards are pretty goddamn stacked. And uh, honestly, I think when it comes down to this list, I think the real winners that I want, my personal choice, obviously Baldur's Gate three. I, I'm just gonna say it right now, if it doesn't win game of the year. I, I I think I'll cut off a left testicle. Okay, like I, I probably will just do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna Joey salads my balls on the line because there's no way Baldur's Gate three isn't winning game of the year. Uh, do I think best action game? I think it should be Resident Evil four. The uh, Capcom killed it with that remake. When it comes to probably best uh, audio design, the hard pick between like Alan Wake two. Actually, I think Alan Wake two is a pretty much shoe in for that. Best music, probably still Final Fantasy 16 easily. But uh, yeah, honestly, all things considered, I think every single month this year has been just banger game after banger game. And uh, even if like, um, I, I think no matter what, 2023 is like the year of the backlog because there's been so many games that have come out this year that I firmly, in my opinion, believe that even if like you couldn't get to all of them, the games this year have been so quality that no matter what, down the road, I think people are going to be playing almost every game from this year at some point. Because even if you weren't interested in certain things, like I wasn't really into Harry Potter whatsoever, but Hogwarts Legacy was a very, very good single player game. Again, for a lot of people, the, the quality of each game is done so well that it's going to attract you even if you were never their target demographic anyways. And I don't think there was a lot of years like this year. Again, I'm remembering 2008, 2010. So anybody that says gaming is dead, and I know I kind of sounded like that this year with some of my like tweets and like statements, but honestly, looking at the year as a whole, this year is probably one of the healthiest for video games. And um, yeah, honestly, Game Awards are coming out, so uh, looking forward to that shit. Looking forward, to, looking forward to seeing Bolt. Listen, no matter what, Baldur's Gate three is going to sweep. But in all fairness, and I say this for the millionth time, Cyberpunk: Phantom Liberty better win Best Narrative, okay? I know I said shit, a lot of crap about CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk, rightfully so. But they did turn it around with that DLC. Hell, it feels like its own game at this point. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, I'm out.